Hey yo, what is up everybody? How are you doing? This is your favorite Nigerian American vlogger on YouTube. Welcome to the Nigerian Nomad channel. Today's video is for people who are looking to relocate back to Nigeria, have a second home in Nigeria like my family and I, and I just wanted to share the challenges that if you're not able to or willing to overcome them, you would not survive in Nigeria and I would also not recommend that you come to Nigeria if you cannot overcome these 10 challenges that I'm going to share with you. A little background, my family and I, we've been frequenting living in Nigeria for like the last three years and then we occasionally go back to US but predominantly Nigeria has been predominantly home for like the last three years and throughout those last three years I've accumulated a lot of knowledge, a lot of different things and I wanted to use that opportunity to kind of share those things with you. So I have my laptop here and I wrote down 10 things that you should, if you're not willing to overcome or work around in Nigeria, that I advise that you definitely don't think about moving here <laughs> or relocating here. You guys ready? Let's do it. All right. Number one, if you do not have a job, or a remote job of some sort, or if you're not coming to have a business or some, something that's going to generate your consistent cash flow, I will say do not move to Nigeria um, because the unemployment rate is high. And even if you do get hired, the amount that you're going to be earning is not going to be enough for you to live the lifestyle that is similar to what you have been living probably in the western part of the world. You will have to really, really downgrade your lifestyle. So I would say, and besides, we don't need more people in Nigeria that are looking for jobs. We're looking for people that are looking to create jobs, start business opportunities in the markets to improve uh, something about the way we operate in Nigeria. Uh, we're looking for people with specialized skill sets. I think those are the people that Nigeria needs right now. Nigeria does not need people that are um, specifically coming here uh, to look for jobs. I don't think they are at that point yet. But if you're hired by an international company or you have a job, maybe like you're a teacher um, and you're getting paid very, very well, um, equivalent to what you would get paid overseas, that is, I would say that would be the only exception I would make. All right, so yeah, if you don't have a job, don't come here. If you don't have cash flow, don't come here. You are not going to survive very long. You're going to be very frustrated and you would not last long. So save some money, um, do some investments, have something that would generate a little bit of cash flow before you even think of coming here. All right, number two, if you are antisocial or you are very used to like, um, being in an individualistic society and you love it, um, Nigeria is going to be a very, very hard environment for you. I would say this country, the way that it's set up, is very, very community oriented and relationship building is such a huge part of the culture here. It's a huge part of thriving. Um, it's a huge part of getting the things that you want done. You need connections, you need relationships. And also besides, there's always a lot of events going on. There's always networking events, there's naming ceremonies, there's wedding. We're a very celebratory culture. And if people invite you to these things and you don't show up, sometimes they almost look at it, they are almost offended because they consider you a friend <laughs> and they feel like you should be there. This probably is maybe similar to a lot of different other cultures, but I'm speaking from a Nigerian perspective. So. Um, in USA that I'm familiar with and a lot of other countries, you can live, it's kind of good and bad. Um, a lot of people are lonely, a lot of people are depressed, uh, but I think some of the factors is because they live a very individualized lifestyle and it's easy for you to get a lot of things done without necessarily interacting or building relationships with others. Um, little things, you know, like you know, going to get your driver's license or passport or a shop or just a lot of different things. You don't necessarily need a lot of uh, relationship building or a network um, to do. So this is definitely very, very, very community oriented. From like your teachers, your school, like you can, I can call the school, I can talk to the teacher, I can talk 
to the driver of the school bus, <laughs> the relationship, I can talk to my banker, I can talk to, like, is that's just part of how the, the, the culture is set up. So yeah, if you're antisocial and you're not community oriented and you're like a loner and you don't like to interact, you're not a people's person, if, and you're not willing to overcome that and work on that, whew, don't move here. You're going to be very frustrated very quickly and you won't last long. <laughs> All right. Are you looking to relocate, invest, have a second home, or retire in Nigeria? If so, I have an opportunity for you. I would like to introduce you to the Green Paradise community. Visit thegreenparadise.com. We're looking forward to having you join our community. See you there. Number three. This one is not so much of a big deal, but it was a big deal to me when I came here. If Customer service, if bad customer service is a pet peeve for you, you are going to be frustrated. Now, there are some establishments and businesses that I've uh, patronized that have wonderful customer service, but we're talking stereotypically in general here. Sometimes, you know, when you're in US, people greet you when you walk in the door. Uh, people say, have a nice day. People say, how are you doing today? They even try to call you by name. Nigeria, sometimes they don't even interact with you. They don't smile. They don't say, have a nice day. <laughs> it's not that they're upset. And they don't even speak up sometimes. It's not that they're upset. It's not that they're having a bad day. They're, it's, I almost feel like they're trying to reserve as much energy. And they just, they're just trying to get through their work day. Um, and I've just kind of gotten to understand that and learn that over time. A lot of times, I would prompt them. And if they don't respond, sometimes I would say, I would repeat it again or I'll say, oh, I'm greeting you. You're not even responding or I'll say, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. I would just try to like spark a smile or get them to interact and engage. And I later realized that they are actually friendly people. A lot of them are nice, but either they have not been trained on proper customer service or they just don't care. Either one of those things. But I think a lot of the times it's actually training or having a good system in place. Also, Nigeria has a culture where they don't return things. So if you if you buy something, there's most of the time you cannot return, you cannot exchange. <laughs> and this causes a lot of friction with you buying things and experimenting with things. So you have to now do a lot of checking, research. There's been times where I went to go buy things at the store. It's very normal practice for them. Like when you buy like something, like they would literally walk you in to plug it. They would test it to make sure it works before you take it out. Um, but yeah, so those are just kind of part of the things. And then again, people are very nonchalant with customer service. Sometimes you can tell somebody A, they would do B. They don't, un like Nigeria is just such a very hard culture to maneuver that. So you always have to like tell people what you want, exactly what you want, when you want it, and be very specific and repeat yourself and try to really, really, really get people to like think about customer service and what they should do. So yeah, and this is across the field whether it's cable company internet company customer service is just not great so yeah all right number four if you cannot handle crazy driving and traffic you are not going to survive here and again a lot of these things that i'm bringing up there are ways to overcome it but i just want to let you know that these are challenges so if you're not going to be able to find a way to overcome it or have it in mind of how I'm going to um, overcome this, it's going to be very hard for you to sustain living in Nigeria a long time. And traffic and driving is one of them. Oh my gosh, the way that people drive here is nuts. People are going to cut you off. People are not going to yield to you while driving. We have a very, very bad, 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 bad driving culture. And I'm going to say specifically for Lagos, Nigeria. I think this video needs to be specifically for Lagos, Nigeria bad bad driving culture and there's also a lot anything can easily throw off a traffic a, everything could be fine and a car can break down and that in itself you already added an hour to traffic <laughs> so like the emergency response is also like very poor so i would say traffic and driving if you're not going to find a way to overcome that it, it's it's you're going to have a very frustrating life <laughs> or live in a make sure to live in a place that you don't have to commute too much. Some people get a driver, some people get an Uber, but that is something that if you're independent and you like to drive, that is something that it's gonna take some getting adjusted to, um, unless you're gonna adapt. 
All right. Number five, if you don't like hot weather, you're not going to love living in Nigeria. I like hot weather, but it is hot here all year round. Whether it is dry season or wet season, which is what they have in Nigeria, it's still hot. <laughs> it's cool sometimes when it's raining, but generally, this is a tropical climate. It's going to be warm all year round. So if you like like the winters and the changing of the seasons and the snows and the other stuff, and you just don't like being hot like that all the time, again, you are not going to love living in Nigeria. It's a tropical climate area. All right. Um, number six, if you do not have the, if you don't have patience or willing to work on it, oh my God, Nigeria is going to, Lagos, Nigeria specific, <laughs> is going to frustrate you. Um, it's almost like it's very weird because it's a very fast paced, fast moving city. But generally, and a lot of other countries can like, I, countries in the island or other African countries can relate to this. People are just generally laid back. They don't take things very seriously. Um, they're, they're not very time sensitive like people like from the diaspora who's been used to like a very high productive society. Everything is time based. Everything is productive. Everything is like a machine that just constantly runs. Uh, Nigeria is not like that. So. If you're not used to that, like driving, you have to be patient with traffic. The people that you're working with, you have to be patient with them. Any artisans, any skills. If you're going, if you if you just even go to a phone company and you just want to do a small change, it could take you two to three hours. If you go to the passport office, they could say you're gonna get it in four, six months. Doing land, everything just moves so slow <laughs> than what I'm used to. So if you're not used to that kind of pace, um, Nigeria is going to be very, very frustrated with you or you're not willing to adapt or figure out a way how to accelerate things and surround you with people who are movers and shakers. Ah, Nigeria is going to be. Lagos, Nigeria. Nigeria generally, actually it's even worse in other Nigerian states. They're even way more laid back. Um, things are, you're going to have a very, very hard time. You're going to be frustrated with the pace of life. Some people look at it as a good thing. It can also force you to slow down and not be always on the go, 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 go. That's some of the benefits of kind of living around here. All right. Number seven. If you have like a life altering, like medical issue that requires you to like um, always have like, you know, like consistent medication, maybe you have a heart, you know, like fibrillator, those type of things that requires constant medical supervision. They have some good hospitals here. But I don't know if Nigeria would be like a good move for you um, because a lot of things are shipped or imported. You want to be in a place that has the medical care and the expertise to kind of deal with those things. Um, so that's something else I will consider um, in moving to Nigeria. But if you don't have any major like health issues that requires constant machine, constant medications, all of those things that's constant that you have to be on close watch. Oh, I feel like Nigeria is a great place to retire and get quality care. Um, for when you're retiring and you want to live a better quality of life um, than, than any other place, um, than like the Western world, I would say. Are you looking to relocate, invest, have a second home, or retire in Nigeria? If so, I have an opportunity for you. I would like to introduce you to the Green Paradise community. Visit thegreenparadise.com. We're looking forward to having you join our community. See you there. Number eight, if you have major, major trust issues, you're not going to last long <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> you're not going to last long. Number one, this environment, um, it's really, we have a culture of like low integrity. Um, and there are people that have good integrity, but yeah, we definitely have a low integrity culture. It's hard to like know who to trust. You always have to double check things. You always have to stay on top of people to do the right thing. You can easily get swindled, easily get taken advantage of, and it can be like overwhelming if you don't know how to maneuver that. And here's what's ironic. You cannot get anything done without trust. <laughs> So yeah, so it, you cannot get anything done without trust. You have to trust, obviously, your driver. You have to trust the, the staffs that you're working with. You have to trust the people that you're doing business with. You, you have to rely on trust. So you now have to figure out how can I overcome 
um, these things in a way that I can do things properly in a way that I'm not getting taken advantage of. So it just takes a lot of experience. It takes a lot of effort. It takes surrounding yourself with the right people. It takes being patient. Um, it takes some emotional discipline. So yeah, but if you're, if you're just like, I have major, major trust issues, huh, Nigeria is going to be a hard climate for you to succeed because there are people that are trustworthy, but because there's a lot of people that are not, it's going to be very, you're always going to be on edge and it can really, really stress you. So I'll say if you have major trust issues, Nigeria is going to be a hard one for you to survive. Number nine, if you want to live a completely American or Western lifestyle, it's, it, you're going to have a, you're not going to last long. So I see a lot of people try to move and they don't last long. It's because they want to keep their same exact identical lifestyle that they're living there. Sure, you can get close to it. You can live in, in locations that have access to those type of amenities and access. If you have money, um, you can create a lot of those environments for you to live as close um, live as close as you used to live in there. But for a lot of people, it's just not sustainable. I think it's much easier to adapt to the environment and then just kind of pick your top priorities of like the pleasures that you like or what's like mandatory. Um, like for example, high speed internet is mandatory for me because I do a lot of work online. So I have to live in an apartment that has fiber access. Light is extremely important to me. So I have to either live in a place like that's fully self-sustainable, solar, off-grid, have a generator, or live in an estate that provides those 247 electricity. But just like, or create it, to, so just like for you to have that, um, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Or the things that you're able to do, the places that you're able to go, um, I think it's much better to just kind of get as close to it as possible and then adapt. So I'll say, it, but if you're like, gonna compare Nigeria constantly to like where you're at like oh we don't do this the way I, I live or oh my gosh this is not being done this way as soon as you wake up every day and walk out of the door you're going to be frustrated every single time because there's going to be somebody not doing things that the way that you're used to <laughs> and after a while your complaint is going to be so much that you're going to frustrate the people around you and you are going to be unhappy so it's much better to just kind of embrace the culture and f now figure out what you're willing to adapt to what you're not willing to adapt to and what and what can you kind of manage and then you live you'll be a much 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 happier person rather than coming in and trying to fight the way that people are doing things it's going to cause too much friction and you're just not going to be happy and you're probably going to create a lot <laughs> a lot of bad blood around people so that is that and finally finally um, you have to be willing to be resourceful and build your own infrastructure in the way that you want it. So um, you cannot, so this one to summarize it, you have to be willing to build your own infrastructure. So um, a lot of the times, like people like me who's lived in the US, a lot of things are very, very turnkey. Like if you want to buy a house, the road to the house is there, the plumbing is already there, everything is wired from the from the cable company, lights company, water company, road is tiled. You literally don't have to do nothing. When you want to rent an apartment, you just come in. Everything is finished. You don't have to. You can literally come in and live there. You can sign the lease and move in that hour, and everything works. <laughs> so yeah, but in Nigeria, no, you have to build your own infrastructure. So like here, like for example, in our apartment, we have to get gas cylinders to power a stove. Um, ACs are not centralized. Uh, we have to get our own AC. You have sometimes have to get your own power. You have to do your own road sometimes. You have to design the house to be the way that you want it to be. So even if you're buying a brand new house, you still have to build it up to taste. Um, so yeah, everything, a lot of people dig their own borehole to get their own water supply. Even if you have water, a lot of people, and I've done this in some of our um, um, short lit apartments, you have to get your own water treatment facility if you live on the island to treat your own water so the water can be clean. <laughs> you have to do a lot of things. You have to be able to build the infrastructure to match the way that you want to do. So it's not a turnkey environment, long story short, like in the West where everything is like turnkey. Everything is very like structured. 
Um, so yeah, if you're willing to be resourceful, you're willing to learn, you're willing to, like I am, I was willing to adapt, I was willing to learn how things are done, how can I operate this, and this is one of the reasons why I open this channel, is to teach other people what I'm learning, so that you guys, when you come to Nigeria, life would not be as frustrating, it can be easily to assimilate into the Nigerian culture. Again guys, everything that I just mentioned, can, you can overcome them, um, but you just, it just takes you uh, kind of taking a step back knowing that you're in a different environment and then kind of taking a list one by one and figuring out how can I overcome this like is there somebody that I can network with can I build a relationship with this person so I don't have to do this um, all the time do I need to get a driver do I need like a fully self-sustainable environment what location do I want to live in um, you know all of those things you just have to think about what is my cash flow if I'm in Nigeria what am I going to be doing to earn money monthly am i what am i going to invest in what is my source of income if you can think through all of those things then yes move to nigeria you're going to have a wonderful life here life can be very beautiful regardless of all the stuff that's happening this is still an emerging um country very fast developing country so there's a lot of opportunities um don't let anybody deceive you Oh, but the only challenge for people locally that are not able to take advantage of the, of the opportunities is because they don't have the cash flow or the expertise or the exposure or the training um, that someone that's outside might have. So I would say that's the only difference, but there's a lot of opportunities. And if you're a problem solver, this is, the, this is an amazing country for you because there's a lot of problems. <laughs> and the people that make a lot of money are the people that create solutions to problems that people have. So yeah, um, that is generally the video of today. I just wanted to kind of shoot that video. Um, I would love for you to comment underneath which one resonates the most with you. I think a lot of you guys, nothing, none of this is new, but I just wanted to share this video for you guys that are thinking of relocating back. Make sure that you are ready to overcome these things. Anyways, comment underneath this video which one, is, which one resonates the most with you. And... Um, yeah, if you have any questions, also comment underneath this video. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you like contents like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And also, if you want to be a part of the community that we're building, we're still selling land, check out thegreenparadise.com. It has all of the details. And lastly, guys, remember, it's your time to rise and let your light shine. Peace.